The Miami Hurricanes got their coordinator hires wrong last year. This year, I believe Mario Cristobal got them right. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Taking questions from you guys, you can tweet us at Locked On Canes. If you follow us at Locked On Canes, we will follow you back. Everyone wants to know about the new coordinators. I, I had the privilege yesterday among you know about a dozen members of the media in South Florida to meet Shannon Dawson, the new offensive coordinator, and Lance Guidry, the new defensive coordinator. We get this question from Dom in Kendall. What are your impressions of the new OC in D.C.? So let me start with Lance Guidry, the defensive coordinator. That dude is a fireball. <laughs> both the new coordinators are Cajun. They're both from South Louisiana. And Dawson spoke to us first. And, you know, he he his, he his lost his voice a little bit, Shannon Dawson. Um, I think he'd been yelling too much in practice. He said he had like a sinus thing. So I think he was like a little off his game, like speech wise, because he didn't have much of a voice. And then Lance Guidry comes out. And he's like, oh, you talking to them Cajun coordinators. Y'all getting a real Cajun now is what he said. And, oh, man, just an absolute ball of energy, just infectious energy from Lance Guidry. A lot of you have probably seen that video that went viral of him while he was at Western Kentucky giving an impassioned locker room speech to his defense about hilltoppers uh and listen Gidry already you can tell has just a great even though he's only been around for a few weeks he's got you know a, a great understanding of his personnel and of his roster and Gidry was emphasizing to us as Dawson was too time and time again Gidry would remind us pads haven't come on yet that's one that's when you're really going to find out what these guys are made of because there's going to be certain players, the all-runway type of guys, who look really good with no pads on. And then the pads come on, you can hit a little bit, and then there are going to be others, especially on the defensive side of the football. Then there are going to be others who stand out, okay? Uh, and now, as far as Shannon Dawson, the big takeaway on Dawson, he seems ready. He's the offensive coordinator to adapt to Miami's talent. Uh, he was asked about his scheme. You know, he comes from the air raid coaching tree. He learned originally under Hal Mummy, the godfather of the air raid. And he said, every scheme is adaptable. He said, the human being isn't because sometimes they're hard headed, but every scheme is adaptable. Now, some people heard that and like, they thought maybe he was taking a shot at Josh Gaddis. I, it wasn't intended that way. No, Nobody's taking shots. Uh, I think he was more kind of defending the idea that I'm not a one-size-fits-all guy, that I'm not coming in here with, you know, a 1999 air raid where we're going to throw it 80% of the time and we're not going to use our tight ends. Because that was one of the things that Shannon Dawson talked about, how Miami is just stacked and loaded with talent at the tight end position. You know, I know we just lost uh, Khalil Brantley to the transfer portal. He was going to be pretty low in the pecking order anyway. When Elijah Arroyo gets healthy, he's going to be in for a breakout year. Jaleel Skinner, regardless, is in for a breakout year. He is healthy right now. Jackson Carver, Riley Williams, the true freshman coming in. I forget sometimes about Cam McCormick. We're going to answer a question about him a little bit later on. But Cam McCormick, who's heading into his eighth year, one of the best graded, top graded blocking tight ends in the country at Oregon. These are He's someone who's really going to help that running game, and he can catch some balls as well. He's tall. He can be a red zone threat. So that's one of the things. I really got the sense in talking with Shannon Dawson on Tuesday, he's excited to work with Miami's tight end room, that there's a lot of depth and a lot of versatility there. And he is ready to adapt his scheme. You know, one of the other money quotes that came out of Shannon Dawson was, he said, uh, in his opinion, the air raid doesn't exist anymore. 
right? Not the way that we used to know it. All the evolution that's gone on over the years. You know, he said, hey, running the football is really important because if you can establish control on the ground, that not only can take valuable time off the clock when you need it, but you're going to throw the football better when you can run the football. That's going to set your offense up to have so much more success down the field. So he said, in my opinion, the air raid doesn't exist anymore. I think that was one of the cooler quotes to come out of Shannon Dawson yesterday. And both of the coordinators they seem genuinely thrilled to be here. Like being at Miami uh, is a dream come true for both of them. I think it was Dawson who specifically referred to being at Miami as a dream job for him, right? And and Gidry said the same thing. And a lot of people assume, you know, South Louisiana guy like Gidry, maybe his dream job would be LSU. And he said, no, I was a, a McNeese State guy growing up and he's worked there as well so I never you know I never really looked at LSU as a dream job but he says Miami is a dream job for his and that that's one of the reasons why I really think Mario Cristobal I'm cautiously optimistic that he got these hires right okay because both of these guys are younger hungry infectious personalities up and coming guys who are clearly willing to burn the midnight oil and put the work in. And on both sides of the football, I think that they are a little bit more ready to adapt to the personnel than the previous two coordinators was, because I think we had issues with that on both sides of the football, with the coordinators adapting to the personnel. I don't believe that's going to be an issue here anymore. We get a question from uh, my pal Ben from the You Heard podcast. He says, Hey, and what are the differences in personalities so far you've noticed between our old and our new coordinators? Now, first of all, uh, I don't know. Like, there was some dude on Twitter who's like tagging me and Josh Gaddis in tweets. Like, I'm trying to pick a fight with Josh Gaddis. Like, eh, enough of that. I listen. I, I know that uh, I've spoken negatively about what he did here as a coordinator and the results on the field last year. Cause it's, it's hard to sugarcoat 19.4 points per game, but I just want to get this clear. I, I have nothing personal against coach Gaddis. He was always nice to me and gracious to me when I covered him last season. And listen, he's, he's at, he's at uh, Maryland's now. And if he does well there, I'm only going to wish him the best. Right. I mean, I, I got no ax to grind with the guy on a personal level. Uh, you know, he was a little bit, um, a little bit more reserved and soft spoken where with Shannon Dawson, the new offensive coordinator, you get more of that fiery rage and Cajun type of personality. Like I mentioned when the media spoke to him on Tuesday, he had lost his voice a little bit, which probably toned him down a couple of notches, but I've also watched him on the field coaching. And when that voice of his starts to go up, you know, he's, he gets really fired up. Same thing with Lance Gidry, uh, Gidry, you know, he's even more like if, if Shannon Dawson gets like to an eight Gidry gets to like a 10 or an 11, like he's a really, really in, intense, but fired up constructive guy. Like he's not cursing players or out or anything like that. He's always saying encouraging things, you know, Kevin Steele, who obviously a little bit older and I like Kevin Steele a lot. He was very gracious to the media last year, you know, really kind of old school guy. You could talk to him for days just about football um, but you know, he didn't have the same sort of just volume and like over the top personality that Lance Gidry does. So I, I would say, you know, Miami's got two Cajun coordinators. I don't know how else to say it. These guys are both, they're both really fired up and they're both a pleasure to be around. Um, we got a really good tweet, uh, that I want to answer on the other side about Jakari Brown and the progress of Miami's sophomore quarterback heading into his second year and you know we saw his ups and downs as a true freshman in live time last year so I want to get to this question about Jakari Brown when we come back and I also want to get to a question about sort of the prototypical types of athletes that Mario Cristobal is recruiting what he wants this roster to physically look like we will get to all of that right here on Locked on Canes right after we talk about the awesome folks at FanDuel we're past the midway point of the NBA season. Hey, my Miami Heat have won two straight games. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores to threes drained. You know, we're still waiting on the Miami Hurricanes' first opponent, in the quarterfinals of the ACC tournament. 
You guys know I'm going to be all over Miami, and I'm going to be looking up those numbers at the FanDuel Sportsbook. So make sure you check that out, guys. Uh, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So do not miss your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever you get your pods, and available free on YouTube. So we get this tweet from Green Tree Quarterly. Tweeted this to me about Jakari Brown. He says, on a Locked on Canes episode recently, uh, I think this was another time when we were reading tweets, some fans were calling Jakari a bust after accuracy issues in year one. Development is real, he says. This guy can be elite. Uh, Green Tree, I couldn't agree with you more on this. Um, sometimes, guys, the discourse about Jakari Brown and the way he can be polarizing among some of the fans, it's baffling to me. It's baffling to me that people are already making judgments about someone who never should have even gotten on the field last year. Right. When you're talking about and I know that, yeah, there are certain true freshman quarterbacks out there around the country that have been like ready to start and play right away. Um, that, that, that was never the case with Jakari. I think we always knew that when he arrived at Miami, that this guy is going to be a little bit of a work in progress, but he's got the physical tools to be an absolute stud. And he never should have played last year. Right. With Tyler Van Dyke's injury issues and Jake Garcia's just inconsistency on the field. Like the way Jakari was getting used as a third down short yardage guy, which was fine, but then he got thrust into actually being an every down quarterback and starting games, which he just wasn't ready for last year. Um, I don't know how you're going to judge a guy who was an 18 year old true freshman last year. Who's like working his way through accuracy issues as a passer. I'll tell you what I've seen so far in a couple practices from Jakari Brown. The footwork looks better. The accuracy looks better. And yeah, he's throwing at targets. He's throwing at nets on the field. Uh, and these are non-contact non -contact drills. So we need to see this actually translate into, you know, scrimmages and such. But I've watched this young man from spring last year into fall last year and into spring this year. I'm watching Jakari Brown improve as a quarterback and as a passer right before my eyes. And I'm also looking at one of the best, best athletes on the team, period. Fast as lightning, large, strong, physical. Um, I cannot wait to see what he turns into. And yeah, the new coordinators we've been talking about, Shannon Dawson, who's his offensive coordinator and his quarterbacks coach, really has the opportunity to help develop Jakari. But um, I'm so glad, Green Tree, that you gave us that tweet because, like, some of the way the people, and, you know, it's probably the minority of you guys, like, maybe most of you who are watching this and listening to this agree with what I'm saying right now. But the way I've seen some people, try to write this guy off like oh he's not a quarterback he'll never be a quarterback first year last year he's still growing and improving and I'm, I'm watching him grow and improve before my very eyes uh, we get a question from Anton who says seems initial size of athlete is a Mario recruiting focus compared to last year how much more of a significant change do you see in the composition of the team are the practices two times more impressive, he says, and looking like an elite team, or is it mainly media and fan hype? Uh, as far as, you know, the fan hype and practices, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to reserve, like, as, I'm, I'm not going to come out here and say, oh, look, this team looks so amazing on the field. They're going to win nine, 10 games next year. No pads. You know, the media is not even, even able to watch 11 on 11s. We're watching individual drills. So I, I don't know if they look two times better, but. They look bigger. <laughs> they look bigger and they look stronger. And I think this is a great question because the more of the, the Mario Cristobal recruits you see on the field, I've been so impressed with, and I haven't really gotten a good look at all of the true freshmen uh, because, you know, the green tree field is very, very big. And some of the players have been positioned on the far corner from what I can look at. But the size of the freshmen, that's something that's jumped off the page for me. Maui Goa and Okun Lola are gigantic. But like, I didn't think it was possible that 18-year-olds could be as big <laughs> and physically mature as these guys are. Emery Williams, 
We've talked about him on a couple of previous episodes, right? Emery, he was one of the first players that I saw when I walked out to Green Tree. I thought he was a tight end before I looked at the roster and realized who he was. His legs are massive and his footwork looks good. And he's I, in the individual drills we've been able to see, like he might just throwing at the targets. He might be the most accurate of the three scholarship quarterbacks, but he's, he's big like Emory Williams. And by the way, Jakari Brown also big, and he's actually a little bit taller than Emory Williams. So for those who are like, wait, when you talk about Emory being so big, is Jakari not big? Yes, Jakari Brown is also big. Uh, I just don't lump him in the same way because I was talking about Emory Williams being a true freshman when Jakari is not. Uh, also, Jaden Wayne and Reuben Bain both look very physically mature out there. Uh, you know, like you compare these guys to someone like Cyrus Moss and even Nigel Lee Kelly, who came in as true freshman last year. And we could say, especially Moss, like, oh, he's he's got to put on a lot of size right now. This class of 2023, all these guys look like their bodies are ready, like they are, they're ready to play college football. I don't know if they're all there quite yet, you know, mentally and, and timing wise, but just physically. All of these true freshmen that I've gotten to look at so far, some of them have not arrived yet, like the running backs, but all the guys I've been able to look at so far they look physically like they belong in power five when some of the guys who came in last year didn't look like that right away. Okay. Get a question from Greg in Coral Springs. He says, Hey, Dono, we missed out on Jaheim Singletary. So who's our next transfer portal player going to be? Yeah, that was, that was a bummer. Uh, if you guys didn't catch the episode we did late afternoon yesterday with John Garcia, Jr. We did talk about uh, Arkansas, which that was a surprise in itself that Jaheim committed to Arkansas and also just the timing of it because Jaheim Singletary, the former five-star corner who was Georgia, then he hit the transfer portal a couple months ago, uh, he was supposed to take multiple other visits this month, including a visit to Miami. He just decided yesterday that he was going to be a Razorback, uh, so he's off the table now. That was unfortunate. I would hope I was hoping that Miami still had a chance for him. Uh, but, you know, you look at the offensive side of the football, Miami is still very much alive for wide receiver Gary Bryant Jr. Uh, his father did an interview uh, with uh, Greg Biggins of 24-7. So Gary Bryant Sr. said of Jr. that he's going to visit Oregon and a and later this month, and then he's going to make a decision by the end of March. So we're going to know within probably about three weeks what Gary Bryant, the wide receiver, former USC Trojan, is going to do. Uh, we know how Miami could use just more uh, – more explosive playmakers at wide receiver and Bryant fits that bill. He's excellent and he can play in the slot or outside. So Gary Bryant Jr. He's already visited Arizona and Miami. And it sounds like Miami has a much better shot than Arizona. So I think it's really going to come down to how these final visits go for him. Like what, how much is he going to like Oregon? How much is he going to like Texas A&M? Um, I think one of the, uh, and I, I do believe Miami has a chance here uh, for Gary Bryant. Um, I hope it doesn't hurt us that when Bryant made his Miami visit, I believe it was in January, at the time when he made his Miami visit, Miami didn't really have an offensive coordinator. Like, you know, Gaddis was technically the coordinator, but that was at a time when he was out you know, looking for other jobs and he wasn't in the building. And I think the staff already knew he was out and he wasn't even there for the Gary Bryant Jr. visit. So basically Miami didn't have an offensive coordinator or a wide receivers coach at the time when he visited. So hopefully that didn't hurt us too much. You know, other coaches like uh, like Coach Field uh, and of course Cristobal and others on the staff, I think really stepped up and, and helped him have a great visit down here. Um, and he does like the Shannon Dawson hire. So that was something that his father talked about. He says they want to air it out, and we've heard good things about the new OC. And he also said that Mario Cristobal is in constant contact with Gary Jr. and that Gary has spoken with Tyler Van Dyke. So I would love to land Gary Bryant Jr. He's got three years of eligibility left. So hopefully that's an offensive playmaker that Miami is able to land. Ooh, got a question about the young edge rushers that I want to get to and about the tight ends and the linebackers. So, folks, keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Make sure for your second listen, you check out Locked on College Basketball. Andy Patton and Isaac Shade 
take you across the college basketball landscape. And it's the time of year for that, folks. Conference tournaments going on, Selection Sunday coming up this week. So make sure you check out Locked On College Basketball, updated every day, taking you around college basketball, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your pods. And yes, uh, we will be talking a lot um, on our next episode, uh, even if it comes out probably, you know what, we'll probably do our next episode after Miami's ACC tournament quarterfinal game so we can react to that. Hopefully we're reacting to a big dub, right? Because the Hurricanes, we know they're going to be dancing, you know, they're going to make the tournament, but seeding is still on the line here because they're probably a five seed right now. Let's see if they can improve their standing. So we certainly have a lot to talk about later in the week with the Miami Hurricanes basketball team because I think Jim Laranega has an awesome team on his hands. And congratulations to Isaiah Wong for taking Player of the Year honors. He is he's an absolute stud. So uh, we get a question from our guy Warbeast. Warbeast asks, he says, two rooms that look pretty solid already are tight end and linebacker. Any news or insights on how the transfers, Cam McCormick and Francisco Maui Goa, are settling in? Um, now, yeah, I mean, linebacker is uh, is very, very young. Actually, both both rooms are pretty young, to be honest, but both rooms look good. So uh, Lance Guidry, he talked about Francisco Maui Goa, the older brother of Francis, transferred from Washington State. You know, I watched as much footage on Francisco as I possibly could when he was transferring. I love what I see. The guy is a playmaker. He scored touchdowns on pick sixes. Like, he is a playmaking linebacker. And Lance Guidry, he called Francisco very natural and very smart. Remember, everybody on this team is learning a new defense. And he said about Maui Goa, uh, he picks up everything very quickly. So I think Maui Goa is uh, he's going to be in play to possibly win a starting job, although he would have to take a job away from Corey Flagg if he's going to win it. But whether he's a starter or not, I think Francisco is going to get a lot of playing time next year. And I, I think I think he's a really good linebacker. Uh, as far as Cam McCormick, uh, Mario Cristobal did name drop McCormick on Saturday when he was talking about Miami's tight end room. Um, speaks very favorably of him, and why not? I mean, McCormick has been involved in football for almost as long as Cristobal has. Now, Cristobal did point out, I, I guess some of the people who write about uh, McCormick refer to him as a 10th-year guy. He's an 8th-year guy, all right? 8th-year, not 10th-year. Cristobal wanted to point that out. Um, and listen, the fact that uh, McCormick, he already knows Mario and Mirabal so well. I think Cam McCormick is going to do just fine. Was one of the highest graded run blocking tight ends in all of college football last year. And he's also a red zone threat, can score touchdowns, big body. So I'm, I'm happy about the McCormick addition. And that's a guy that I don't talk about enough because I talk so much about Skinner and Arroyo and Williams and Carver, the freshman coming in. Uh, I think sometimes I forget to mention Cam McCormick. So experienced, and I think he's going to add something hopefully very special to that tight end room. Get a question from Chalupa Batman. He says, out of the young guys, Jaden Wayne, Cyrus Moss, Reuben Bain, who do you see having the most sacks this year? Oh, man. Well, this – uh that would be purely just a blind guess on my part. Um, but if I'm going to make a blind guess, I will entertain the question. Uh, you know, Cyrus Moss heading into his second year was a little undersized last year. You know, full disclosure, I haven't. Maybe it's my fault for not making an effort to really look for Cyrus Moss. So I got to see, like, I don't know how much weight he's put on since last year. So I, I got to double check on him. But Jaden Wayne and Ruben Bain, both like they look ready to go out there and sack people right now. Uh, I'm going to say, and they're both excellent players. I, I'm, I'm going to say Ruben Bain will be the guy who could have the most sacks this year only because this dude set every high school sack record <laughs> the last couple of years and in his career. And he's 270. Like Mario Cristobal talked about, Hurricane Bain and that he's 270 pounds and he's got that crazy motor. Good luck blocking him. Okay. So I don't know. I feel like, and I don't think any of these guys are going to have like double digit sacks next year, but I think Bain could end up being the guy who gets a handful. So that if you're going to, if you're going to make me do a blind prediction, I think that's the blind uh, prediction that I'm going to make there. Get a question from Rich Romero, who says, uh, can you see a three headed monster backfield this year with Don Chaney Henry Parrish and Trevante Citizen. 
Uh, if they can stay healthy, why not? You know, uh, Cheney, Cheney's healthy right now. That's great. Trevante Citizen is not, so he's got to keep recovering from that knee surgery. Um, you know, the neither of the true freshmen are here right now. They're not early enrollees, but I, I wouldn't rule out Fletcher or Johnson. Maybe we'll have a, a quintuple headed monster. A five, a five, well, I used a fancy word there. Quintuple, you know what that means? That means five. We're going to have a five headed monster backfield next year. How about that? Um, and also, maybe my guy, uh, the walk on Mike Perino, who's a Paisan, who I'm a big fan of, maybe a six headed monster backfield next year. Get a question from Thanos. Thanos says, hey, has Demarcus Van Dyke's role been upgraded to keep him here? I hope at least a pay bump. Also, is Coach Joe Salavea out? I heard that Jason Taylor has been working with the whole D-line. Um, you know, Joe, Joe Salavea is still in. Uh, he's still – he's still so Jason Taylor is also – his title is defensive line coach. Joe Salavea's title is defensive line coach. You know, it's it's not impossible to have two coaches who have the same title. So, you know, Sa Salavea is still in. Now, he did he did interview for an NFL job, I think, a few weeks ago that he didn't get with the Detroit Lions. So, you know, who knows? I mean, you know, maybe maybe he could uh, he could go, but he's still there. Uh, Co Coach Joe is still around, and I like Coach Joe a lot. As far as Demarcus Van Dyke, uh, he's still there. I don't. Listen, what do I know? I don't I don't know if he's he, he's not on field, right? He's not gotten a promotion to be an on field assistant. So he's still an analyst. As far as him getting a pay bump, maybe I I don't know. I I don't have access to the man's bank account. I and, you know, he, he deserves it. I like DVD a lot, um, you know, and some people like some people are like trying to blame DeMarcus for not for Miami not landing uh, Jaheim Singletary. Like, how do any of us know if if that's his fault? I mean. Maybe maybe the only reason Miami had a shot might have been because of Demarcus Van Dyke, for all we know. So that'll do it for the Q&A today. I do want to send a few thank yous because we got some new five-star uh, reviews on Apple Podcasts, which I always appreciate. You know, if, if you listen to the audio version, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, if you can take you know a couple minutes and leave us a five-star review, it means a lot. And I like to shout these out on the show. I'm always I'm so bad with the technology here. I'm trying to pull up the reviews. All right, so we get a new review from Superman four three four four who says about us the best Canes pod on the planet. Wow, the big planet. Are you sure about that? Are you sure we're one of the best? I will give you that. Knowledgeable, witty, consistent, and no hot takes. Money, money, money. You know I've been working on trying to get hotter takes. <laughs> So maybe I shouldn't, maybe if my takes were hotter maybe, uh, we wouldn't have gotten the five star from Superman. So maybe it's better that my takes are not scorching hot. Uh, we get a, a, a review from somebody who's called toxic fart with a pH though, spells it with a pH. So it's, it's not, uh, it's not vulgar in any way. He says, Alex Dono has great insight is well connected. And his opinions are well grounded and well articulated. Thank you. Uh, what are you waiting for? Subscribe now. That's from dolphin Kane is what he goes by. Uh, thank you. Uh, Jim Carver writes, if I could leave six stars, I would. Oh, so Tim Cook, is he still the CEO of Apple? Tim Cook, if you could add a sixth star, please do that so that we can get those six star reviews. But sincerely, thank you guys so much. And if you guys want to leave us an Apple podcast review, uh, we read all those on the show. I try to read the Spotify ones as well. They're like harder to find for some reason. Like I have to go to like a different website to find the Spotify reviews. But we like to shout out as many of those as we can. We will talk to you again tomorrow on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.